come and dream with me. Hello, welcome to What Do You Want to Watch, the Exposure Network's premier media podcast. Every week we get together to talk about TVs, movies, online content, help you answer the question, are we just going to forget everything Ezra Miller has done? Find out later in this episode. I'm your host, Ash Nobly. Join me today, Dylan Blight. What? This is a bit where you, you, you pretend you forgot, like, your memory got wiped. Yeah, but okay, he's nodding. Okay. Uh, on today's episode, we'll be talking about what's in our watch history, talking some news, giving you week, this week's top three, and of course, giving some thumbs to some of the biggest trailers of the year. Uh, let's just jump straight into it. I've got a review up at explosionhour.com of Magic Mike's Last Dance. Uh, I gave it a 7.5 and said, if this truly is Magic Mike's Last Dance, it's a enjoyable final chapter for Mike Lane. With a charismatic central couple and some impressive dance pieces, it's sure to please fans of the series, even if it isn't as young and immature as it once was. Uh, of course, this is the third Magic Mike film. Uh, the direct- this one's directed by Steven Soderbergh, who came back after directing the first one. Uh, written by... Reed Carolyn, again, uh, starring Shane Tatum and Summer Hayek Penalt, uh, in which uh, Magic Mike gets uh, swept away to London and made to uh, direct a dance troupe, I guess, in a fancy London theatre while romancing Summer Hayek. <laughs> I had a good time. I thought I thought it was uh, very enjoyable. I think there's some really good dance set pieces uh, it's definitely not the fun romp of uh, Magic Mike XXL. Uh, you should check out, if you've watched the films, you should check out our spoiler cast that we did of the first two Magic Mike films, uh, in which we both agree the second movie is better because it, it's just it's just fun. Uh, and a lot of that fun is missing from this film. It's um, There's some fun banter between a lot of the different family members um, because Sam Hayek plays like a recently separated uh, woman who's raising an adopted daughter and then part of British high society, so she's a butler called Victor, who's very funny. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, it's enjoyable. There's some really, really impressive dance sequences. Um, it, it's a lot less strippery, though. It's a lot more modern dance than stripper. The thing, the thing I put it out in my review is, they're all wearing pants. It's like, come on. Are you gonna, are you gonna be... <laughs> <laughs> come on. Where's the, where's the, you know, consistency? <laughs> consistency. <laughs> I couldn't think of the, you know, we see all the women in the, the small tops and the small bottoms. Why are the men wearing pants? Is what I'm saying. Where's the ass? Where is the, the equality? Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Where's the equality? Dylan, you saw Magic Mike's last dance. What'd you think? Um, it was fine. It was, um, yeah, so I, I stand by. The second one's just a lot more fun. Doesn't take itself super serious while still telling it just a simple, interesting story. It has a lot more. Uh, just yeah, it's just a very fun movie. I, I feel like I fall back into similar problems that I had with the first one with this one. I don't, I don't buy into the romance. Ruin it, sort of ruins. You didn't the movie. like the romance? No, didn't work for me. The 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 sexy sort of dance at the start of the movie, like I could buy into that as a I'm getting paid like. Mike just has a one night stand, sure, whatever. But from then on, the just the, the the as it progresses more and more to the to the finale, which is built all along, along this, he loves this woman so much. Suddenly, <laughs> sort of finale, no, didn't didn't buy into it. I, I couldn't. And it, like if I and it, it's the whole movie is relying on you get you believing in that, or else the emotion between everything else that's happening between the characters obviously is just not going to work. But um, nothing against Selma Hayek or Channing Tatum. I just don't, yeah, I just don't feel like the writing's there to, to, to really justify or make the story work for those two characters. Um, but yeah, everyone's fine in it. The girl playing the, the her do- daughter, I feel like was fun. The butler dude was fun or whatever. But yeah, it just doesn't have the. Uh, I actually think it's the worst one. Wow. Okay. There's mine. There's my hot take. I got two, one, three. I think it's two, three, one for me. So, as much as I complained about the romance from the first one, I at least had the I still had the lot more interesting characters and had Matthew McConaughey going all right, all right, all right. That was fun. So, <laughs> he said not, it not once. Not that here. <laughs> it's 
all I need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, also up on the website, you've got a review for somebody that I used to know. Uh, is yes, this, this a, is this the finally they're adapting the Got Your song to a movie? Yeah, it's, re- it's really weird okay. where it plays at the start of the movie. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, so this is written by Alison Brie and Dave Franco, and written uh, directed by Dave Franco. So it's like the couple couple will do a rom com thing. IRL couple do a rom com. The plot is. Elsa Bree's character, uh, like, gets her show. She's, like, a producer, a host for, like, a shitty reality show or whatever. Like, Love on an Island type thing. It gets uh, cancelled. Like, that's literally what it is. Like some one It's called like, Love on an Island? I don't know. I can't that's, remember. But someone picked that isn't up. Isn't that a real yeah. show? Isn't that a, that's surely a real show by now. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be surprised. Um... And then she like comes back to her hometown to see her mum. While she's there, she bumps into her ex, and she has this really great fun night. And she like kisses him at the end. It's really awkward. And he takes off, and then she goes to his house the next day and finds out that he's like about to get married, a couple weeks away, and like they're having this whole thing. And she hangs around for one night because she's invited. But then she does this whole thing where she's like, "No, it's destiny. We're meant to be together. So I'm just gonna like tag along for the rest of the the wedding. I'm gonna basically force myself into the wedding party at the stage and try and get back with him because we're meant to be together." Or some sort of thing. The plot is very similar, and I mentioned it in my review, to Young Adult, which is a Charlize Theron movie um, directed by um, Jason Roman. And that movie, I think, is highly underappreciated because it is funny in a way that people don't appreciate while also just giving a, like, just going, you know what? Sometimes shitty people are shitty. And, like, they don't always, like, have a happy ending. Sometimes they don't... Shitty people don't learn their lessons and suddenly just become better people by the end. Like, that movie's just, like, some people are just shitty. And that's life. <laughs> and I sort of just appreciate it. Whereas this movie sort of does the opposite thing. Um, it's sort of paint-by-numbers rom-com for a degree. I appreciate what it tries to do at the end. Like, it has something to say about life decisions and... You know, like not giving up everything for love and whatever else. And but yeah, the most interesting character in it is the fuck. I don't have IMDb open in front of me, but the 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 fiance who's played by um, Iris West. What's her What's her name? You know, the, the actress who's going to play Iris West. Oh, Iris, Iris, Iris West in the Flash. Yeah, so she's the love interest, and she's really good in this. And like, I'm consistently like this. She's good in everything. I shout out my review like dope and. Um, and something else, but say how, like, if Ezra Miller hadn't fucked up The Flash, then she'd probably be more of a, a known name at this point because she just hasn't had a chance to sort of shine, but... Well, um, they've had nine years. No, Why haven't they put the movie out before? So, anyway, keep, keep Yeah, going. well, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so I go to five out of five. It's just, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a particularly great rom-com. 5.5 5 out of five, just to be... 5.5 5 out of ten. Yeah. Uh, so I've got the opportunity to see Women Talking early. Uh, of course, this is the Academy Award nominated film, uh, Best Picture nominee, uh, directed by Sarah Polley, starring Rooney Mara, Claire Foy, Jesse Buckley, Judith Ivey, Ben Whishaw, and Frances McDormand, uh, set in a remote, uh, Mennonite community, uh, which is like a very Christian, uh, colony but this is something that threw me because i didn't know this going in it's set in 2010 mm. but so it's like an amish-esque community i thought it was much yeah. more of a period piece you know what i mean just based on the clothing and everything and the lack of technology and that kind of stuff uh but yeah it's 2010 uh it's focuses around a group of women who are deciding whether to leave the colony uh or stay and fight or forgive the men who have uh who there's a group of men who have been uh, using cow tranquilizers to drug women at night and uh, rape them. Uh, and yeah, so the women are deciding what they're going to do as the men go to the city to bail them out. <laughs> um, I think given the subject matter, it's like going in, you think it's going to be much darker and harder of a movie, but this is surprisingly hopeful, I guess. Um, I think it is, it's a really good movie, well acted, I don't think, there's not necessarily a standout, but everybody is really fantastic, um, the, 
everybody's motivations as to this perspective and what they want to whether they want to stay and fight whether they want to leave whether they want to stay kind of gets slowly played out over the course of the film um of course there are so many tragic and fucked up things like um that are kind of revealed like there's an older lady who uh she's got a pack of dentures and it's kind of revealed that while she was uh raped and during the process they like smashed her teeth in uh, so she wakes up in the morning and pulls out all her teeth but she can't wear the dentures because they're too big oh that's very Probably. sad um i think d- there's no never any f- footage of any of the attacks that, which is probably coming from a female director that makes sense um it's all, but it's all like very much aftermath stuff which is just as effective as any of that could, could have possibly been um but yeah it's a really really fantastic film very powerful talking about how important rational decision making and discussion and like talking through issues actually is um and yeah i think it's it's definitely one people should watch and uh, you know it it didn't do very well at the american box office but obviously it being nominated uh will hopefully get more people to see it um yeah i think it's really fantastic uh yeah yeah and it, it's i will say one thing uh francis mcdormand she's on the poster barely in the film <laughs> she's but she's she's if francis mcdormand's in a film it makes everyone act better is that is that do you know even if she's no, not no one wants to be no one wants to be the 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 weak link I against francis McDormand. the weak link yeah Fra- like francis in the movie you better fucking come with the a-game yeah so i went down a bit of a documentary watching uh yeah i saw this rabbit hole <laughs> you watched something that i've had on my watch list for a while and i haven't got a chance to watch it yet. okay so i watched so i saw a trailer last year for a documentary called mr organ so it's directed by david ferrier uh it's a new zealand documentary yeah this is the one i want to watch because i've watched his other stuff okay uh so it involves it all starts, he was the David Ferrier, American uh, Kiwi journalist. There's a story that comes out about a man who's been clamping cars outside of a, like, an antique store. Because apparently the car park in front of the antique store is private property. So he clamps the cars and then extorts people for seven hundred, several hundreds of dollars to unclamp the car. Which at the time was a legal thing in New Zealand. Um... So David Ferrier covers the story, uh, and then he starts going down the rabbit hole of the person who's in a lot of the like footage that people shoot. Because of course, if someone's extorting you for money, you pull out your phone and you <laughs> record the person. Uh, and it's a guy called Michael Organ or Organ or who knows. Uh, and he kind of delves into his backstory and history. Um, he's claimed to be a from a descendant of royalty he claims to he's putting out a documents uh claiming to be a lawyer even though he's not a lawyer uh there's a whole crazy mystery that kind of unfolds um around this person and it includes interviews with him like he's full he has full-on conversations with him on camera and stuff uh but he is like a incredible liar just talking bullshit the entire time i mean it is a fascinating watch um yeah, just to kind of get a look at this kind of, a, a, you know, a sociopath, I guess. I don't know. Compulsive liar, <laughs> I guess. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think it's a pretty interesting documentary. Um, but of course, this led me down the dar- rabbit hole of finally getting around to watching Tickled. So you've watched Tickled, I'm guessing. Um so again, Dave Ferrier working as an entertainment reporter in New Zealand, uh, where he like covers fun viral videos that show on the internet, uh, and he happens to come across a video about the uh, Endurance Tickling League, which is meant to be some sort of tickling sport. He assumes he contacts the company, hoping to get an interview, uh, and then proceeds to get a bunch of uh, homophobic and. Uh, threatening emails constantly after reporting and asking for an interview 
Uh, so this leads him down the rabbit hole of exploring what the fuck is this company and who are these people uh, doing it and what why. Uh, and then that kind of leads down an incredibly dark rabbit hole that I don't think any you could have seen coming no, at all. That's yeah. The, I mean- I don't, like, I, it's one of those documentaries where I've mentioned it to people, and I try and get people to watch it, but I'm also trying to explain it and not spoil how wild it gets. <laughs> this, yeah, it gets, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think, <laughs> uh, I'm glad, it's interesting because obviously I feel like Mr. Organ, like, has a similar style and well it clearly has a very similar style but very similar story it's the same people it's him and his same camera yeah like, I've, a, I've yeah read about it I've i mean it feels it. very very similar like but you know different stories different subject matter uh but yeah i think you know solid double feature <laughs> uh, and what you need to watch is dark tourist on netflix yeah maybe i do you know just to knock out that 100 percent on track uh i did also watch the tickle king which is a hbo special follow-up uh, to uh, Tickled, uh, which is really just about how the people who are covered in Tickled come after them during the the release of the film, uh, which is an interesting watch. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that. Uh, Dylan, you've got around to watching Shrinking. Yeah, so I started watching Shrinking. I'm caught up now, I believe. Most of the episodes dropped. I don't know. I can't remember. What days is it coming out? Fridays. It's Apple TV show. I'm, I'm, I'm up to date. Um... Yeah, very good. Very, 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 very good. Yes. I'll follow up on everything you said last week. Obviously, it's um very funny while dealing with like people dealing with trauma, and you know, it's got these really great performances and quite funny moments. Like I've I've laughed out loud a lot in in this show just for at times stupid bits, just very stupid bits. I'm, like this week's just him attempting to bite a fucking potato in half had me for some reason. <laughs> just, <laughs> just uh, uh, Harrison Ford is also very good in this. Him singing in the car was <laughs> something special. Uh, there's yeah, a lot of really fun characters in the show, but yeah, d- I, deep down I appreciate that it is like when you read between the lines, it's it does consistently follow through the fact that you know his wife's dead and. He's like, he's been dealing with it in certain ways and he's got a daughter who was dealing with it and, you know, like he hasn't been there for her. Like it is dealing with serious things while, um, and each episode does play with and build upon this and even Harrison Ford's character being like more or less implying that even though he's acting like he seems so much happier now, um, Jason Segel's character that, you know, it's, it's really, he's using this new, uh, therapy technique that he's doing where he just tells people, how it is like sort of a, as another coping mechanism and he still isn't actually grieving properly. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very good. And I would highly, I, I, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You need to check out the clip of Harrison Ford singing Sugar Ray's every morning. It's, yeah, it's very good. It's very funny. <laughs> it's wouldn't have seen it coming. You know? No. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like Harrison Ford's having the most fun. He's had in anything in a while. <laughs> Just him. Um, also, uh, we, um, he runs over everyone, just like pulls into the car park or whatever. <laughs> I passed my driving test again. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Uh, I've watched the first two episodes of Not Dead Yet. So this is a new series on App- uh, Disney Plus uh, in which uh, Gina Rodriguez plays a journalist who's just come back after leaving her job to for love. Went to London for like two, three years. That didn't work out. So she's come back and working in a newspaper. Things have changed and she's uh, been made to write the obituaries, uh, which is, you know, not a great job in the newspaper. Uh, But uh, suddenly, as she starts writing obituaries, she starts to get visited by the dead people who she's writing the obituaries about. You know, and, you know... Because they're not dead yet. Yeah, they're not dead yet. They're almost dead. Or almost gone. I don't know. It's enjoyable enough. I mean, it's a simple premise and it's got uh, a solid cast. I mean, it's Gina Rodriguez, uh, Hannah Simone from New Girl, Lauren Ash from Superstore. It, you know, solid trio of women there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a simple, pretty reasonably simple premise. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's it's a classic half-hour sitcom 
kind of stuff. So only two episodes in, hard to say. Uh, she also has an autistic roommate who uh, likes things a particular way and seeing their dynamic kind of play out is enjoyable. Um, yeah, I think it, it, probably too early in to make a definitive call on it, but I mean, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. All right, uh, let's move into the mandatory Netflix segment of the show. Uh, the only thing I watched on Netflix this week, the Bill Russell documentary, Bill Russell Legend. So Bill Russell was a uh, basketball player in the, the NBA for several seasons. One of the first big uh, black or African-American athletes in America. Um, followed, kind of covers his career. It's interesting, the formatting of it. It's two movie-length episodes, uh, which is... Like 90 minutes. Yeah, well, I think it's... Hour 45? Like two hours each. Okay. Yeah. Which is an interesting choice, like given Netflix and how they like to break things down into much more parts. Easy to digest chunks or whatever. Uh, You know, everyone just binges it anyway. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, it just kind of covers his extensive career. Uh, Of course, he's known for winning 11 NBA championships, which I believe is the most of all time. Um, also delving into a lot of the uh a lot of the work that he did in the civil rights movements and uh his life in Boston obviously being an African American person not long after segregation is still uh being a major issue in America um but yeah I thought I thought it was interesting uh lots of really good talking heads a lot of current NBA players a lot of people who he played with a lot of people um analysts and that kind of stuff yeah i think it was a really well put together documentary of course because he passed away in the last 12 months i believe um so yeah fitting tribute uh and yeah that's everything in our watch history this week let's move into some film news here's a story that got people's attention last week uh amc theaters looks like it's decided to take a page from united airlines where amc ceo adam Aaron was once a marketing executive with the launch of its Sightline program to charge a little extra to reserve the best seats in the house. The world's largest theater chain makes money on what users once had for free. Uh, Dylan, did you see the story? And what did you think of them charging more for central seats? The, the, problem, the problem I have um, with any of these current stories around cinema, cinemas trying to make money, I guess, is that so cinema so, attendance is down <laughs> like that's a that's a that's a thing that's a that's a known thing yeah um and some cinema chains are tr- trying to figure out ways to make up Fix that. the money they've lost yeah and as much as some of these things sound dumb and ridiculous and this is sort of one of them like premium seats in a cinema sounds like a very dumb idea i just i find it I can't find it within myself to get super any, angry at any cinema trying to keep their business open, if that makes yeah. sense. So, I don't know. Like, as someone who likes cinemas, it's sort of hard for me to yeah go, be like, yeah, fuck it. They should just, like, die. I, I I don't know. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. I don't know how else they make money. Like, Yeah. Uh, I will also point out that the program is meant to be on, like, showings that have a lot of people like coming like uh late, like movies. after 4 p.m and on set on weekends and that kind of stuff so obviously yeah, okay it's not like it's an empty theater and you're like oh what the fuck am i sitting on the side when nobody's yeah, paying for full, this central. okay so just the full ones where it's packed out anyway yeah. yeah uh i don't think it's a terrible idea would i be paying an extra two bucks probably not <laughs> i sit on the aisle anyway i say yeah i sit on the side but i don't want to be well, away from the side. people who that's the yeah. point Mm. Uh, honestly, I can't remember the actual last it. Well, E sixteen. No, I'm trying to think of the last movie that I went to see that was like a reasonably packed crowd. Uh, that was difficult to find seats. Or yeah, it was the last Marvel movie for me. Yeah, probably or maybe Avatar, like first day. Uh, oh yeah, Avatar was packed too. Actually, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. I don't know. It seems like an odd... It's, yeah, I think probably people being upset about having to pay more for something that they didn't have to pay for before. 
But really, who cares? Because only the only people who are going to care about people who want to sit in the who desperately need to sit in the middle seats. You know. Yeah, you- I mean they do it on yeah they do it on the airlines. Everyone accepts it. So. Hmm. I don't know. Was it so? Then you got the other thing about paying more for a certain movie and whatever. Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Premium premium tax on like other movies. This other thing that's been going around or whatever. I think that yeah. Well, rumor is Disney was like I wouldn't be surprised if like Disney movies cost more because I believe they asked for a larger cut of the revenue. So why mm-hmm. would it, you know? It makes sense that they would charge more for those type of movies or something. But yeah, we'll see. I haven't particularly seen any stories recently about them charging extra for no. But again, that's something I'll be like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, like that would make sense. You have to pay more to see (laughs) Ant Man and the Wasp than you do women talking. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Or or pay more for Avatar because it's like a three-hour movie than you would a ninety-minute movie. Yeah, well, I don't think the time. I just think that, like, the production company, the like, you know, these sorts of things. If 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 cinemas have to charge more for on the movies that everyone comes and watches. So, um, you know, how many people only go watch Marvel movies every couple of months? Probably a lot of people. Yeah. If you have to charge those people an extra few bucks and then the other movies that release in between that only a, a tenth of the people attend, their normal price, doesn't bother me. Yeah. Uh, over to Variety, they've got a bunch of stories about piracy in 2022. Uh... Mostly pointing out that piracy has gone up 18% uh, in 2022, uh, reading for Variety. After dipping back during the great COVID lockdown, media piracy has come back, come roaring back the proliferation of popular streaming TV content and the return of robust wide released film slates have helped drive steady increase in illicit viewing since 2020, according to exclusive data from piracy focused research firm Muso. This data measured t- 20. 20- 215 billion global visits to piracy websites in 2022, an 18% year-on-year, year-over-year increase compared with 2021. The US, unsurprisingly, has a large share of film and TV demand of any country, with more than 13.5 billion visits to piracy sites. Globally, TVC, TV piracy claimed the largest traffic of share of traffic, over 46%. Film trailed in a distant third behind publishing at 13%. Uh, the film sector, however, saw a major leap in piracy in 2022 with illicit consumption of film content growing 30%, 36% year over year, while the volume of wild release movies uh, remained depressed from pre pandemic levels. Uh, last year, the increase from prior year in high profile blockbuster titles helped fuel demand. Uh, Dylan, are you surprised the piracy is back in a big way <laughs> or continues to grow? Mm, surprise, no. Sad, sure. I don't know. I just, I, don't, I get, I know I get like my high horse for piracy sometimes, but just like, especially when it's something you can just watch. I understand to agree. Like even Weird Al was, <laughs> saw a bunch of tweets I didn't realize he tweeted like a while back, but someone like tweeted him ages ago. I was like, hey, there's no way to watch the the Weird Al movie in Australia. And he like basically in between like a, a funny way of like to, to pirate it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and I, I've seen that as a common sentiment for some like people when they're like, you know, like if you can't watch it, piracy is the only way. Like you, I'm not getting your money anyway. That's different sort of thing. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird when you see like let's take a and I don't know if this is a really good example, but the one I found really interesting recently is you have something like um the what the fuck's the movie called the kitchen no the kitchen no the what the fuck's that Ralph Fiennes one the the menu. Meal, the, the menu, right? Which didn't do well in cinemas. Comes out in Disney Plus. Everyone's watching it, everyone's talking about it suddenly. I'm sure a lot of people are just what pirating it as well. Because as soon as there's a as soon as it's online, as soon as it's digital, someone rips it, it's downloaded by all these people. So now everyone's like saying this movie's really great, blah 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 blah. But then we're gonna write read a couple story a month from months from now that director can't get another <laughs> movie because the movie bombed and no one wants to hire him again. And then everyone goes, We well, love that movie though. And then, <laughs> this is the thing I don't feel like everyone like it's I don't know. This is this thing where people don't understand that if these movies don't perform cinema, like that's the, that's the yeah. that's the benchmark. Like you can yeah. you can pirate it and say you love it. You can be like, oh, I brought the fucking poster, <laughs> I brought the t shirt. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. 
I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the most interesting thing I found was that uh, the traffic to the sources. Uh, here we go. Uh, data suggests furthermore that users often have what Muzo calls preferred piracy destinations of choice to watch or download content. Only about a fourth of film and TV piracy in 22 was directed by from search engines, with whopping two-thirds coming from direct traffic that is navigating directly to the pir- piracy site in question. Uh, so yeah, I think that's interesting in that it's that just mean? people who like- who know what site they go to um, and go to it. Uh, a lot. Also, it was pointed out in the article that it uh, the streaming of pirated content is where it's at now, not the old the old. Uh, download the file. Download file days. Uh, it's just mm. streaming straight from the site, so yeah. making it much easier. Did Piracy is much easier it. than it ever was. I think if you're only streaming it, the legality is you you don't actually have the file, so you can't get in trouble. And then I think for the sites, if they are only embedding it from somewhere else, they're simply hosting a video. It's not actually on their site, so they can't get in trouble either. Is the um. Hmm. Is the legal battleground there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I've got the list of the top ten pirated uh, films and top ten pirated TV shows. Uh, Dylan, do you want to take a guess of what the n- most pirated film in twenty twenty two was? Top Gun. Nope. Top Gun is sitting at number eight. Um, and they theorize why it's so low is because it was such a long period between. Uh, theater release and it actually coming out on VAT where high HD ver- yeah, pirated be- things could come out. Be- no one wants to watch a cam rip. Um, is it some like, uh, is it one of those really shitty romance Netflix movies that came out last year? No, it's not. Okay. I will admit it is a movie that came out in 2021. Mm, that's sort of hard. I can't even think what came out in 2021 then. No, I don't know. That's harder. If it came out twenty one, I can't. So the remember top four out. top five are comic book movies. Okay, so it's just Marvel movies. Look, I can't remember what came out. Black <laughs> Widow? Was that last year? No. Oh. What came out last year? Don't know. They're all boring. Uh so number five is Black Adam. Oh. Number four is Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, that was a movie. Number three is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Number two is the Batman. Hmm. Number one, Spider Man, No Way Home. Oh yeah, adds up. It does add up. Makes sense. Uh, making up the bottom five. Number six, Uncharted. Okay, go PlayStation Productions. You know, people want more of that Uncharted. Uh, number seven, Eternals. <laughs> number eight, Top Gun Maverick. Number nine, Jurassic World Dominion. And number ten, Encanto. So yeah, I think I think interesting the yeah i don't think there's been other than them being massive studio movies uh, i don't think there's any like correlation that you can make from that too much mm-hmm. over on the tv side this is a bit more fascinating house uh, of the dragon yes house of the dragon was the most pirated <laughs> tv show easy <laughs> do you want to guess what number two was uh neighbors no, it was not Neighbours. Oh, no, nah, I don't know. Number two was Chainsaw Man. Oh, yeah, anime. So, yeah, number one, House of Dragon. Number two, Chainsaw Man. Number three, Running Man. Sub or dub? Sub or dub? I don't know. I assume it's oh. sub, like shitty sub. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, number three is Running Man, which apparently is a South Korean TV show. I want to say. I can't see. Yeah. Uh, number four was Rick and Morty. Number five was Moon Knight. Number six was Bleach. Number seven, The Eminence in Shadow. Number eight, The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Number nine, Spy and Family. Number ten was The Rising of the Shield Hero. Uh, so a lot of anime shows uh, making the top ten. Um, whether it's just people... Obviously, there's a bit of delay between... It's released in Japan and it's released on. Uh, is there though? Here. Because don't if you pay for whatever premium, isn't it like the same day? Yeah, but you have to pay for. 
Yeah, just to clarify, like it's not impossible, right? It's just yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess it's for people who aren't regular anime watchers. I guess would be who don't subscribe to Crunchyroll, where you can pre- get pretty much everything now. Um, the interesting thing is, obviously, the largest streamed TV shows last year were Stranger Things, Ozark, Wednesday, Cobra Kai, Bridgerton, Virgin River, Dharma, Love Is Blind, all Netflix shows. None of the Netflix shows are on the t- that top 10 list. But that might be about to change with them about to crack down on password <laughs> sharing. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the thing that's most interesting to me, that obviously uh, Netflix is kind of, as much as they would like to get the that, at least they're getting people who have paid for an account to watch their stuff and um, pirating it. I mean, that's... Someone's paid for an account, and then you got five other people using the account, so <laughs> <laughs> sharing a password on a f- forum or family members. I mean, they're getting a so. little bit of money, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I mean, yeah. Interesting, I guess. <laughs> I guess we'll see how things change in the next uh, 12 months. But uh, yeah, piracy, still a thing. We don't condone it here. What do you want to watch? Moving on. Uh, a film version of Spirited Away stage play adaptation uh, is set to come to theaters. Great news for anime fans and anyone every, and fans of everything that is haunting yet wonderful. The stage play adaptation of Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli's beloved anime classic Spirited Away is finally heading to the US, but yet you won't have to see it exclusively in New York yet because J Kids is set to release it in theaters across North America. Dylan, do you want to see the stage play version of Spirit Away, your favorite Studio Ghibli film? I would love to if, watch this RL, but the, watching a film version, I guess, will be my uh, runner-up. Every time, that, ever since I've had this ha- happening, and I've seen pictures of it and stuff, I just think it looks awesome. So, yeah, I'll, I'll watch this. I wish I could just watch it, though. It's the same as I've, I've never actually gone and watched that Hamilton Disney Plus thing, because I've, I'm like, ah, I've, I've, I've seen it. I saw it the better way. I saw it RL. I saw Hamilton. Do I need to watch the stage play? Do I need to watch the Disney Plus live film version? Nah. Not going to be as good. I don't know. I haven't seen the, the stage play version. I found this in the film. <laughs> Everything's uh, better the, in real yeah. life, Ash. Well, you know, maybe yeah. the people who originated the roles were better than the people who appeared in the Australian version. Maybe maybe the American version had more money in it. You know what I mean? It's fucking stage play. How much? More, like what? <laughs> it's not special effects budget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final story for this week. I know what you did last summer is the latest horror franchise to get a legacy sequel. I know what you're doing next summer, or at least something soon. The teen slasher uh, is reportedly the next big horror saga to get the legacy sequel treatment, according to Deadline. Uh, we might even be able to catch some of the original film's characters back in action. The outlet reports that Do Revenge director and co-writer Jennifer Caitlin Robinson is on board to direct the sequel for Sony with both Freddie Prince Jr. and Jennifer Love Hewitt in talks to reprise their roles from the 1997 film. Uh, this is far from the first time the group story of a group of guilty teens being haunted by a hook can man has been revisited. The original was followed up by two sequels and a now cancelled Prime video series readapted the 1973 Lois Duncan novel in 2021. Dylan, are you a fan of I Know What You Did Last Summer and do you want a legacy sequel? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm down. First one's very good. Second one's fine. Um, second one ended with this whole... Bit. Like, I went back and looked because I remember I was, I was like, I swear they killed off Jennifer Love Hewitt. But it's just this whole thing where at the end of the movie it has a clip of, like, she looks under the bed and the dude's under there but it could just all be in her head, like, you know, like she's that fucked up. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm keen. This it's part of the it's part of the the world of this the best nineties slashes. It's the uh, the film was written by Kevin Williamson, you know the person. So the person who was doing the screen movies, who sort of just had this string of hit after hit after hit in the the nineties there. So um, I don't know. <laughs> of them just been like, we'll get the people doing um get Radio Silence who's <laughs> doing Scream to do this. I don't know who I'd want to direct it, but um, yeah, I'm down. Uh, yeah, as someone who has no attachment, not terribly interested, I did like Jennifer Caitlin Robinson's work on Do Revenge, so if it's in that vein, I'd be interested, but 
for I know what you did last summer, fans. I mean, <laughs> cool. It's it's it's, you know what, it's a weird story. Do you know story what the, you know what the synopsis the... is, or do you, do you know what the like setup is? For this I mean, yeah, they murdered somebody and then try to hide it, and they somebody comes and well, then they accidentally hit someone. Of... They accidentally yeah. hit someone like driving, and then they yeah. like hide it instead of yeah, and then they start getting these letters that say, "I know what you did last summer." Yeah. So it's interesting, obviously, on the back of the TV series that they're doing. <laughs> Going back to the original, or going back to the film versions, I guess. Mm. But yeah, all right, that's all the film news we've got for this week. Let's give some thumbs to trailers. Uh, of course, you can find all the trailers we're about to talk about in the show notes below, or by going to explosionart.com. Check out the podcast post there. Uh, it's a big week for trailers, some really big ones. And we'll kick things off with The Flash. Directed by Andy Machete, starring Ezra Miller, Sasha Kale, Michael Shannon, Ron Lindiston, Maribel Voodoo, Kirsty Clemens, Ante Chow, and Michael Keaton. Words collide in the Flash when Barry. Yeah, words collide in the Weird. Flash when Barry <laughs> uses his superpowers to travel back in time in order to change the events of the past. But when his attempt to save his family inadvertently alters the future, Barry becomes trapped in a reality in which General Zod has returned, threatening annihilation. There are no superheroes to turn to. That is, unless Barry can coax a very different Batman out of retirement and rescue an imprisoned Kryptonian, albeit not the one he's looking for. Ultimately, to save the world that he is in and return to the future that he knows, Barry's only hope is to race for his life. But will making the ultimate sacrifice be enough to reset the universe? Dylan, what did you think of the trailer for? The Flash. Um, so I think it's a double thumbs up trailer, but I just, I can't, I find it hard to get excited about this movie. I'm like, have we just, like, I understand that as far as I'm aware, we had these news stories that were like, Ezra Miller's like doing rehab, like for life, <laughs> I don't know, but like, he, like, <laughs> the Flash, <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like, just, for Yes, this movie has just been pushed and pushed and pushed and we went from this will be great to whatever and then it's just Ezra Miller's going around starting fights, doing whatever else. Kidnapping people, allegedly. Kidnapping people, uh, acquisitions of sexual whatever, assault and all these other sorts of things. And then they started, they did this like hush sort of like, oh, he's, you know, Ezra Miller's getting help now and then like went silent for a while and then they put out the trailer and then everyone's like fuck i can't wait for this movie it looks so good and i'm like i can't like yes the trailer is double thumbs up very good trailer but holy fuck like are we as a society terrible at just being like fuck that guy <laughs> to whoever like for many things like fuck that guy in general and then two weeks later fucking yes <laughs> just, i just I'm, i find it very weird but yeah, I agree. It's a two thumbs up trailer, <laughs> but again, it's just the weirdness around uh, the coverage of it um, and everybody. Well, uh, there are I see a lot of tweets and like joking about making jokes about how the press tour is going to go and <laughs> um, how you know they're not going to be too involved or they're going to be hidden behind glass or <laughs> they're going to they're going to come out Hannibal Lecter style to different press places. Um, obviously, it's a case of it's too big to. For them to let to fail, you know. It was too big of a project for them to just tax cut, <laughs> I guess. Um, and everybody around Ezra looks great. It's cool to see Michael mm. getting in the suit. Mm. Uh, proper look, I guess, this time. Uh, we got a f- proper first look at Sasha Kale as Supergirl. Um, I didn't realise General Zod and Michael Shannon were back in this movie. Uh there's lots of like little tidbits. There's like it looks like the Nolan Batman's in there. But it's hard to tell. Like for a hot one second on the bike at the end. Yeah. On the bike. Whether it's like they're gonna do the thing where he's jumping between multiverses and he just like they show a snip snippet of that. They've got Ben Affleck in this movie. I think it it yeah, they've got so many people involved that it would have been almost impossible for them to pull this. Uh and also scheduling wise it would have been very well. I guess they could have delayed this and recast and done whatever special effects they needed to do or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think they're kind of we're kind of 
fucked. <laughs> anyway, they went. Can I just, like, <laughs> timeline for Ezra Miller, a person who, yeah. <laughs> April 6, 2020, uh, Miller strangling a woman in a club. March 28th, 2022, arrested in Hawaii, physical alteration with patrons after hurling obscenities at customers at a karaoke bar, blah, blah, blah. Um, 20, June 2022, temporary order of uh, protection uh, on behalf of 18-year-old activists uh, for Takata Iron Eyes uh, because of Miller, like, abusing and whatever else. But then you got harassment allegations, June 16, 2022, a mother and a child uh, granted a temporary harassment prevention order against Miller in Massachusetts after they said Miller threatened the woman's family and showed up inappropriate behavior towards the child. Uh, Miller was uh, pestering the child and uncomfortably touching the child's lips. As reported, Miller has been housing a uh, woman in Hawaii April 2022. There was children aged one to five years old there. Um, one, uh, one child put a loose bullet in the mouth burglary charge august 7th 2022 miller was charged with felony burglary in stanford vermont stemming from what police reported a theft of bottles of alcohol from a home blah 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 blah. um then you've august 15th 2022 a representative miller released a statement providing which miller apologized for past behavior there is months of months and years of behavior and it oh i just yeah i'm fucking like i this is the thing i i just can't like okay are you gonna go watch the movie I don't think I can. No. I don't think I can unless un- un- unless there is true. What if it turns out true- it's a massive publicity stunt too? Then he's playing the reverse flash. <laughs> mm. I it's just. I, I is, don't think I can. Barry yeah. Dillon. Maybe this is two asterisks. We don't know. I just can't. I can't. Like, I can't. I. It's a known thing that I. I like, and I wish more people like the separation of art from artists. This whole bullshit. Like, just, there's too much. It's not just a couple weird things. Like, I know, people, like, you, you, you know, these, you know, the celebrities get drunk and fucking get into a bar fight and then they apologize, whatever. Like, there's nothing. This, this is a whole, this is a whole bunch of weird shit that was going on here for a very long period of time. Um, unless I get some actual apologies, explanations, um, people f- who went through the shit actually s- saying that they accept the apologies or something. Why is it up to me, us, the public, to accept the p- apologies and be like, oh, that's fine. What about the, p- the, the people Ezra's hurt? Like, I, I need to hear from them that they are, they are okay. Yeah. You know? That's, the, that's where I'm at with this. It's just very fucking weird. Especially when it's an actor playing a superhero. Someone you're supposed to really root for. Someone who's supposed to be like a, a sign of good in the world and everything like that. If someone playing a superhero is seen as a bad person IRL, I'm personally going to struggle with getting behind them in that role because that's mm. just odd. If Ezra Miller's playing a bad guy <laughs> in a movie, <laughs> if he's playing fucking General Zod, then sure. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a little bit easier for me to get into it. But I'm like, Ezra Miller as a superhero, I fucking, like, I, I'm struggling. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting because, you know, we've already seen a case of people not caring about <laughs> social issues around a massive uh, property. So I fully expect everybody to go see this. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it'll do bad. It's going to do massive. It's going to yeah. be huge. It'll make lots of money. Everyone's going to love yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to be the cool. story around the film that's going to be... It, this press tour is going to be mental because everybody's going to be asking all the actors and stuff about Ezra. <laughs> like, you would assume. Surely they can't put him. Yeah. It's going to be wild. So, yes. uh, The Flash is set to release in cinemas uh, 15th of June. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, Next trailer is Air, directed by Ben Affleck, starring Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Jason Bateman, Chris Messina, Marlon Wayans, Chris Tucker, and Viola Davis. Sonny Vaccaro and Nike pursue basketball rookie Michael Jordan creating a partnership that revolutionizes the world of sports and contemporary culture. Tell them, what do you think of the trailer for Air? Uh, I'm going double thumbs up. This just looks like in the... the, the I don't know. Is there, is there a subcategory for just these types of movies about real-life events where they're played, like, super serious, like the world could end if everything doesn't <laughs> go the way, even though you know exactly the way it's going to turn out because it's based on true story. Anyway, it's fine. Um, there's a shot of Ben Affleck in this wearing these ridiculous sunglasses. That was quite good. Um, 
Yeah, I'm down. I like Ben Affleck's a good director. Not all of his movies are hits. Casty is really good. I'm not sure if I love Matt Damon in this role, but I know it's just Matt Damon doing Matt Damon a bit, I guess, to to an extent. But yeah, I'll go, I'll, I'll go double thumbs up. I'm keen. They, is is Jordan not in this? Is this is this the thing? Because like you have his parents in it or whatever else. Are we just not like are they not cast someone as Jordan? I think they've cast playing? somebody as Jordan. They just didn't show him. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is two thumbs up for me. Obviously, I kind of know the story of how this played out and obviously nike was the company that didn't was unfashionable uh was mostly like known for just running shoes um and then obviously they landed michael jordan taking a massive risk on uh a player who had not played a game of nba yet and signing him to a lucrative incredible deal like one of the most in hindsight, it was the worst deal Nike, Nike probably ever made because <laughs> they had to pay Michael Jordan so much money over the years for the his uh, the use of his name and everything. Uh, but yeah, I think it's an interesting sub- subject matter. I think uh, Ben Affleck is a pretty solid director. Interesting. No, he he only starred in The Way Back. I don't think he directed The Way Back, but yeah. Because obviously that was a basketball movie as well. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, interesting following sub- subject matter. Interesting to see Ben Affleck and uh, Matt Damon back together. Well, I guess they also did The Last Duel together, so, I mean, it's not that. <laughs> they haven't been not together in a while. Uh, but, yeah, I like the trailer. I'm keen to see how they bring this to life, so, yeah. Air! It's coming to Australian cinemas on the 5th of April. Next trailer is Strays, directed by Josh Greenbaum. Starring Will Ferrell, Jamie Foxx, Will Forte, Isla Fisher, Randall Park, Josh Gad, Harvey Gillen, Rob Riggle, Brett Gelman, Jamie Demetrio, and Sophia Vergara. An abandoned dog named Reggie teams up with other strays to get revenge on his former owner who never wants him. Dylan, what do you think of Trailer for Strays? I watched this trailer last week, and then if you had sent through the trailers to watch this week and this wasn't in it, I was actually going to be like, no. Upset. You need to, yeah, you need to add this one in. Because we get to a part in this trailer where I hear a dog go, I'm going to bite his fucking dick off. <laughs> That's what I, was, I just remembered that line and started laughing again. <laughs> if at that point you're not aboard this movie, I don't know what's wrong with you. So yeah, double thumbs up. I highly suggest everyone go watch the trailer. It was fucking dumb. It is <laughs> the dumbest fucking movie. It's, a, it's not even like great CGI dog lip things but it doesn't even matter like it's just these dogs getting high <laughs> it's just it's i'm gonna bite his fucking cock off <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm keen uh yeah this is two thumbs up from me as well i think <laughs> obviously the the genre of talking animals has been one that we've seen a lot of over the years you know fan of what uh the the beverly hills chihuahuas or whatever I feel like it was a reasonably big franchise. And of course, you got your Garfields and your whatevers. And Babe, obviously, probably being the height of the genre. Uh, but this is the, f- this in my mind, would be the first R rated yeah, venture in this, yeah. this, where, you know, they're just humping stuff and saying bad stuff. And Will, yeah. Will Forte playing the perfect shitty dog owner. Yeah. Uh, is it, we play a game called Fetch Fuck, where I go get a ball, he throws it really far, and then I come home and then drop it off to him, and he goes, Fuck! <laughs> and that's how I know I won. <laughs> and, th- and that's how I know I won. <laughs> Fantastic. Great uh, casting uh, across the board. Um, yeah, really fun. And of course, Jeff, uh, you know what? Jeff, uh, Jeff Greenbaum last directed. Josh Greenbaum? Yeah. Yeah, the un- the highly underrated um, uh, star and bar-, uh, bar and star go uh, the Vista del Mar. That's yeah, I think it. Yes, that's right. So very different tone. What I'm guessing. <laughs> that well, that a bit more absurdist. Too. Like you can watch the trailer for that and not realize how wild that movie gets. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Keen for Strays, which is coming to Australian cinemas on the eighth of June. Next trailer: Luther, the Fallen Son. Directed by Jamie Payne, starring Idris Elba, Cynthia Erivo, and Andy Serkis. A serial killer terrorizes London while disgraced detective John Luther sits behind bars. Haunted by his failure to capture the cyber psychopath who now haunts him, Luther decides to break out of prison to finish the job by any means necessary. Dylan, are you a Luther fan? What do you think of the trailer? 
I'm a Luffy fan, however, I haven't watched that last story they did. Um, when the when that released a couple of years ago, I want to say 2019. Yeah, I've 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 never got around to watching that, so I feel sort of bad. But that's what I need to do prior to watching this. But the first few seasons of Luther were absolute must watches, um, especially when it was mostly. See, the only thing I'm going to go one up, one down this trailer because my only problem with it is I do not see, and I don't know if it's confirmed if Alice is in this or not, but I can't see. To I need, so Alice, what's her fucking actress? Sister? Ruth Wilson. Ruth Wilson. Yeah, if she's, like, I just feel like Luther and Ruth, like, I just need those two cat. That's the shot. I know it's called Luther, but if, I, if I'm getting, like, a, a movie-length Luther thing and it's got no Alice in it, I'm sort of a bit let down, to be honest, but um, Carl looks right. Uh, Andy Serkis looks really good as the bad guy and whatever else. Obviously, it's a lot more action-heavy than your typical Luther TV series would be, but I guess that's fine. Uh, but, yeah, I need to catch up on this this. Do a little bit of a loof of rewatching, I think, prior to this. Uh, yeah, so I've watched one episode of Luther. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a show that I definitely want to go back to. And obviously, you know, this is the show that kind of propelled Idris Elba to becoming Idris yeah, Elba. Yeah, so whenever people wanted to play Batman, it was like, well, it's just Luther, but Batman. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this looks like a Netflix film. <laughs> Uh, obviously it's helped by the fact that it has all this past history and stuff. So I think, uh, that will, obviously it's going to have an audience for it. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I'll go one up, one down as well. I think Andy Serkis looks wild in this, like oh. very different to anything you see in Andy Serkis too, <laughs> I feel like, uh, but yeah, if this movie can just propel me to finally go and watch the 20 episodes of Luther, then I guess. It's done a good job. <laughs> You're gonna wait to watch this and then decide if you want to watch it, or I don't know. Maybe we do we do we do we do I have to prepare for this movie by watching twenty episodes of television? <laughs> oh no, I forgot. Which seems doable. Releases yes. each episode. There's not that. I mean, what They're an hour each is the thing. Yeah, so. it's possible. We'll see. Uh, so Luther is coming to like cinemas on the twenty third of February. Uh, and releasing on Netflix on the 10th of March. Last trailer for this week. It's the main event, Dylan. Fast X. Directed by Louis Leterrier. Starring Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, Chris Ludacris Bridges, Jason Momoa, Natalie Emmanuel, Jordan, Dana Brewster, John Cena, Jason Statham, Sung Kang, Alan Richardson, <laughs> Daniela McCaw, Scott Eastwood, Helen Mirren, Charlie's Theron, Brie Larson, and Rita Moreno. Dominic Toretto must protect his crew and family from Cypher, who now joins forces with Dante, the son of drug kinpin Hernan Reyes, seeking revenge for his father's death during the events of Fast Five. Dylan, what did you think of the trailer for Fast X? Double thumbs up, of course. Like, what the fuck am I doing? This, I can't wait for this movie. This is going to be a movie yet. Yeah. But- I've, the only thing that I find so funny is every time these new trials out, you still get these people at 10 movies and go, I miss, <laughs> miss what I was just about. Car racing. Who watches this shit? I can tell you what, when it's fucking one of the biggest movies of the year, everyone watches this shit. You, you can watch this shit. You just talk shit about it is, is how it goes. Um, this movie really does feel like the, 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 the we're getting into that final lap, you know? It, everyone's in this but The Rock. <laughs> it's basically, you know, we got we got everyone back with Gal. And Gal, but she died. Did she though? Yeah, that's true. Everyone comes back eventually. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it looks really great. A uh, little tidbits, obviously. Jason Momoa's character looks just comic book perfect for a uh, Fast and Furious villain. Him just at the start throwing the bomb under the car and be like boom or whatever <laughs> just like yeah. the car blowing up and just he seems like very cool in it someone pointed out there's that shot where he's like before he does the car race where he's like jason momo's character here has like his hair and braids he's got his fingernails like car coordinated painted like he's just the most over the top he's wearing ridiculous. like a bunch of skull rings <laughs> he's wearing, he's wearing yeah, skull he's got rings plus his hair. he's got <laughs> yeah. uh glass uh glasses chain so it doesn't fall yep. off his face yep he's just a it's a wow. it's an interesting character. <laughs> I don't know if it's just Jason Momoa wearing whatever the fuck he wants or what the guy is, but I'm I'm down for it. I love the whole just it's absolutely ridiculous that they keep fitting characters and moments into things from previous fast 
Fast and Furious movies, but I'm down. The whole fact that they have that shot that started with like, yeah, well, they pull the fucking bank out. He was there when he's in, <laughs> when he's on the, when he's in the car, he was there. Like, it just does they, I, they, Fast and Furious just has like every movie there. They're like, you know that movie like seven movies ago? Well, yeah, there was a character here, but we didn't see them because the camera was here, but they were there the entire time. Like we do. <laughs> I love how it just fits in. So, um, everything's always connected. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but then there were, uh, Cypher's laying on a, a bed next to uh, Lady. Don't know what the guy was there, but um, Deckard Shaw gets to have his moment with. Um, we finally get to see him and um, Han like have a, a, a moment in this where he's like, Is he still drive or <laughs> whatever. Um, you got bloody Queenie, Helen, Mir- Helen Mirren's back in this. Um, I don't know. This is obviously, I, I love these movies. They're just the, they are the, the perfect dumb fun. Like when people talk about dumb fun, but it's really a bad movie. This isn't it. It's dumb fun done right. And that's Fast and Furious. So hopefully this is good. Obviously we only got two more, including this. So one more yeah. after this, but let's, let's go. Yeah. Two thumbs up from here as well. I think, uh, I'm, I enjoy the retcon of, uh, Jace Momoa being in Fast and Furious 5, which is arguably one of the best. Fast and Furious movies, um, yeah, just uh, he, he looks like he's playing it over top of the villain, which I'm on board with. Uh, there's a bunch of crazy action. There's John Cena driving a car, firing rockets. Uh, yep. He also AA's a person through a floor, so you know yep. if you if you love the Rock, Rock bottoming, Rock bottoming somebody through a table, yeah, you know, uh, John Cena just one upped him. I think this is like a power play thing, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he's he's stronger. He put him through a through a floor. Let's uh, say about John Cena that he can work with Vin Diesel, the the rock out. Yeah. Okay. okay, easier to work with. No, there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it is. It's interesting that there's so many. Obviously, there's like a lot of uh, scenes that are reminiscent of previous Fast and Furious films. Is obviously they obviously go back to that bridge from Fast and Furious Five at some points. Uh, they clearly are alluding to Fast Seven, I want to say, where they're flying they're on that highway, and he does that jump. Except in Seven with the tank, this time it's a bunch of helicopters. He fucking smashes those. I don't know how. <laughs> surely he, yeah. And oh, oh, did you watch the Super Bowl TV spot as well? No, I haven't. D- hang on, live reaction. You do, you watch, right. you find the Fast and Furious six, uh, ten, One Super Bowl Fast spot. X Super Bowl spot. Uh, Fast Bowl Super Bowl spot. All right, here we go. Oh, I got mute on. <laughs> it's supposed to be him driving off the fucking thing of the cars, the fucking <laughs> trying to like sandwich him in between two fucking trucks. You never took my mistake. You never took my car. <laughs> he literally dives, drives off a dam. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, interest. It's uh, yeah, it's interesting seeing as they're talking about this like it's a part one, but it's yeah. Is it going to end on a cliffhanger? Yeah, I assume it. I assume so. Like, I, I, I don't, you can't go into the last movie, like, oh, he's a new bad guy, you know, like, it's just. Like, I don't know, he came out and says, hey, for the last film we want, I want Robert Downey Jr. to show up. It's uh, the emphasis yeah. of Dominic Toretto. But also, Vin Diesel just, like, He's just talking shit. <laughs> he just talks shit. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> uh, all right. Of course, Who's fast. Who's awesome, though? I, I feel like she's, she's Mrs. She's Miss Nobody. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I, I feel like obviously she has to be someone because like, everyone's connected these days. So like, yeah, or she's a uh, uh, brother, uh, Brian's brother, brother's sister, cousins. I can't. I can't. I had a long lost brother. I can't do another long lost. How are they going to explain long-lost. Brian not being at that di- lunch at the start of the movie, <laughs> at the start of the trailer? We're in Marino. <laughs> oh, he's just in the bathroom. That's why he's not. He's missing Grace. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they have like someone sitting in a chair. Could could hair. could they could they kill Brian off in this movie? No, no, they won't. Brian, yeah, they back themselves into a corner. Bye. Yeah, no, you're not gonna do that. Bad taste. 
Fast X is coming to Australian cinemas on the 18th of May. So yeah, look forward to that. Uh, all right, let's move into this week's top three. Definitely in the top three. Uh, of course, Super Bowl happened this weekend. Big TV extravaganza. Rihanna performed. Uh, turns out she's pregnant. She's uh, She was in a harness. She was on a floating stage. It was crazy. Uh, I watched it. I watched hmm? that part. I watched that. You watched the halftime show? Yeah. Weird. It was good. Lots of lots of good. puffy jackets. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Yeah. But, you know, one of the big things about the Super Bowl is uh, the commercials. It's where a bunch of commercials air for the first time. Uh, usually a lot of big celebrities or cool ideas chucked out there because it's the most viewed thing of the year. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to do this week is top three Super Bowl... 52, sorry, is that right? Super Bowl 57 commercials. <laughs> Fucking Roman numerals, am I right? <laughs> Dylan, what's number three? Um, number three is for, I don't know what the ad was for, but the clueless one. Okay. <laughs> that one. That was pretty cool. Bruce Silverstone, throwback. I'd love it. They, they, should, they should just make a another one. I think that, that, that one sold me. Like, well, clearly not clueless. enough to get you to remember what the product was, but... I can't about the fucking pr- product. I was just like, hell yeah, make another Clueless. <laughs> it was a fun little bit. You had both the main characters there. I can't remember the actress's name on top of my head though. But they were both there. Had had It was a good throwback. She sits out there and there. They're like, you're too old to be in school. She's like, am I? Oh, no, I'm not. It's good. All right. My number three is for a beer called Sam Adams. Uh, it's- so you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. A I know. Well, I Adam. at least wrote down what the actual product is. Who cares, man? Uh, it is just a fun beer ad where you know it's obviously a beer that's based around the Boston area, uh, and they imagine what a really nice Boston would be. So it's people like Red Sox play people hugging Yankee fans. Hey, I'm parking here. Yeah, you take the parking spot, and they're all speaking with Boston accents, which yeah. to Australians is very funny, uh, yeah. and very being very polite. You know, asking them to making sure they're recycling and that kind of stuff. I mm. thought it was a very amusing ad. <laughs> Dylan, what's your number two? Number two, I remember this one because it stands out. They mention it in the actual advertisement. So, Pop Corners, the Breaking Bad one. I thought it was a good bit. Say their name. Um, good bit. I love how, like, ten years later, Breaking Bad just is still a thing that you can just whip out as a, a thing to get people excited about a, a product. So, you know. The, the jokes here, Ash, that w- would have gone over your head is he makes blue chips. So he makes blue ice in the show. That's the yeah. color of the, the drug he makes. And another character is Tuco. And that's the first uh, drug dealer that he, like, teams up with. Like. No, I kind of got that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't think it's sacrilege to revive those characters for a popcorn chip ad? I already watched them this year. This is the in, last. Um... <laughs> this is the last piece of Breaking Bad content. It was pretty funny, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, my number two is the GM uh, electric video Netflix ad in which uh, Will Ferrell appears uh, in a bunch of Netflix-esque properties uh, with a the GM electric cars, because apparently they're going to be showing those in Netflix shows going forward. Uh, not necessarily all the shows, not necessarily uh, Bridgerton, which, you know, <laughs> They do cut of them walking down like this flowery path, and there's a the car behind them, uh, and they got little what's her name from Stranger Things, and she pretends to be Dustin. Uh, amusing. I think he gets bitten by a zombie. Good times. Very funny. <laughs> what's your number one Super Bowl trailer for this year? My number one was for I can remember the product, uh, Bud Light, the hold one, which I thought was very smart. Funny, sort of wholesome, where they're just they're on hold to somewhere it doesn't matter, but they're playing the most stereotypical hold music that you hear at most places, and there's just this couple like dancing around the room. It's Miles Teller, right? Yeah, Miles Teller and someone else I don't know, but yeah. there's the couple like dancing around the room, whatever. I thought it was fun. I thought it was wholesome. Like everyone, everyone knows this. Like especially whether they stop for a moment, it's just like you, we appreciate you waiting, and just keep like dancing or whatever. Like I thought it was wholesome. I thought it was fun. Yeah. My number one trailer is the Doritos trailer starring Jack Harlow. (laughs) 
in which he gives up becoming a rap star and becomes a professional triangle player. Because you need to look at life from new angles. Okay? And uh, the world gets triangle hysteria. Everybody's playing triangles. <laughs> There's a shot of an uh, instrument store where the guy's screaming, We're out of triangles, but we've still got cowbells. <laughs> and then the, the, the big uh, punchline is uh, best triangle player at the Grammys or whatever goes to Elton John. Very fun. Amusing. So, yeah, I thought it was a good day at trailer. All right. Dylan, this week, what do you want to watch? Ant Man. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing like what else is what else is out this week. I mean, it's mostly. I mean, Ant Man's the big one. Uh, also coming to cinemas this week. Yeah, see, it's my fault. Uh, close the uh. I don't know what country the 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 very the foreign films coming out in cinemas. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is coming out in cinemas. Yeah, I, look, Women I'm Talking a, I'm a, is coming out. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Should I be picking things I can actually watch in this segment on the weekend? <laughs> I don't. Know. We're still working. We're still Probably. working out this segment. Should I pick stuff I know I can watch and I'll be that I can talk about next week? That's true. Or should I pick stuff that I actually just want to watch that I know I can't watch because it ain't going to be at my cinema? Or should I say one of each? So in that case, it would be, hey, I'm going to watch Ant-Man. That's definitely out Wednesday. Keen to watch that. Woman Talking, I'd love to watch. Not in my cinemas currently. Winnie the Pooh, Blunt Honey, I really want to watch because, boy, that looks like a fucking wild ride. Uh, also not in my cinemas. So there's my... Close, I want to watch. I can... But again. So out of everything that I know I can watch, my pick is the one thing, Ant-Man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I want to watch Ant Man as well. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, unsurprising. Although I'm a little put off. Uh, obviously, they had some uh, preview screenings uh, this past Monday here in Australia. Mixed reviews, from what I can see. Yeah. So, some calling it terrible, and others, well, from the the circle that I follow, not liking the film. So, we'll, well, I guess we'll see. Check out all new Mavacast. Uh, probably later today, uh, or look tonight, after we watch the movie, we'll be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania over there. Uh, let us know what you want to watch this week. Uh, what's your top three Super Bowl commercials? What do you think of all the trailers that came out this week? Anything we talked about on this episode, uh, by going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. Uh, if you want to help us out here or what do you want to watch this review on Apple podcast on Podchaser. is five stars and you can leave five stars tell people about the show or head over to explosion.com check out our news reviews podcasts uh and just click around a bunch that helps and if you like this episode thought it was worth a dollar head on over to our Kofi page at explosion.com slash support thank you very much for listening until next time keep watching stuff i guess